LJN, the rainbow of doom. Most people despise the company and their supposedly crappy games, but I actually enjoy them. And that's why I now don the moniker of the LJN Defender. After a several months long hiatus, the LJN Defender is refreshed and ready to once again stick up for the Rainbow of Doom. We're knee deep into summer, and boy what a summer it's been. The average temperatures can best be described by the title of that old KISS song, so I think we could all use some cool vibes to counteract that intense heat, and there's no better way to do that than by taking a virtual trip to the beach with the infamous TNC Surf Designs Wooden Water Rage. The Atlas developed TNC Surf Designs Wooden Water Rage was released for the NES in February 1988. Wooden Water Rage mixes the two sports that the popular board manufacturer is most known for and features a colorful cast of characters including Cool Cat and Thrilla Gorilla. In keeping with the precedent of the genre, there really isn't much in the way of a story, but the manual begins with a flashy prologue that perfectly sets the tone. Cool Cat and the rest of the Boys compete against each other in a series of extreme events spanning across the game's three modes. The streetscape session in Big Wave Encounter self-explanatorily spreads the action across the suburban and aquatic landscapes while the titular mode combines the two into an epic shred fest. The controls for the former are pretty simple and straightforward overall, with the A and B buttons being assigned the tasks of jumping and accelerating respectively, while the D-pad is essential for successfully traversing the tricky obstacle courses. There are 10 plus rounds of adrenaline pumping action to race through in a predetermined time limit in which to finish them. Each slip or fall we succumb to during our playthrough will eat away at our limited amount of time and life symbols, but luckily there are means by which to counteract this curse. We're rewarded additional life symbols for performing tricks and maintaining a proper speed, and maxing out the meter will cause the timer to freeze in place. The timer remains in this state until we're involved in another accident, but being that the courses offer very little deviation from one round to the next, it's relatively easy to memorize the layout and avoid this frustrating fate. As to be expected, the difficulty ramps up ever so slightly with each successive level, and this, combined with the dwindling default life symbols and unforgiving clock, meant that I'd hit a metaphorical brick wall by round 11. All in all, Streetscape Session has more positive traits than negative. The graphics are colorful and cartoony, the music is metal to the core, and I had a lot of fun with the tough but fair challenge. The Big Wave Encounter, on the other hand, is where the crux of TNC's criticism stems from, and I found it to be quite confusing. In stark contrast to its ground-based peer, Big Wave Encounter ditches a straightforward objective in favor of cryptic controls and mechanics that have continued to confound gamers since the 8-bit era. The manual states that we only have to reach the beach in order to complete the game, but the methods required to do so are far more complex than you'd ever imagine. Upon starting up this section, we're immediately tossed into the thick of things and assaulted by an array of hazards including beach bombs and scavenging seagulls. Colliding with this nuisance will still erode the life meter, but the burden of the timer has thankfully been removed, so we apparently just have to survive this onslaught and rack up points until the goal is reached. The points are racked up via the utilization of stunts, and the manual continues its useless streak by providing erroneous information on how to perform them. The A and B buttons are apparently used for moving the characters backwards and forwards, but we're actually supposed to hold the buttons down in order to bounce them off the waves. Benevolent Dick's tips and tricks video was a huge help in learning the ropes, but I still had a hard time getting the hang of things and I was only able to get to round 4 through sheer dumb luck. I suppose it's possible that my skills aren't up to snuff, but considering that there have been countless complaints about the surfing section over the years, I think it's safe to say that the big wave encounter itself is inherently problematic, and while there are some like Benevolent Dick who are determined to stick it out and gain a mastery over the flawed execution, most people are understandably turned off by it. 
nevertheless, while this ensured that wooden water age wouldn't live up to its full potential, it didn't hinder its commercial viability, and its success would pave the way for a second TNC entry in the NES library, aka the formula expanding follow up that goes by the name of Thrilla's Surfari. Released four years after the polarizing original, Thrilla's Safari puts the spotlight solely on the titular gorilla in a story-based adventure developed by Sculptured Software. Thrilla's Safari follows the primate protagonist across seven Super Mario Bros.-esque worlds as he attempts to rescue his kidnapped girlfriend from the evil Wazula. In spite of being previously confined to the waves, Thurla can now skate with the best of them and he utilizes his newly acquired skills to traverse a wide variety of dangerous jungle environments. Sculptured Software, the studio that would later go on to produce the excellent 16-bit WWF and Star Wars trilogies, did an admirable job of respecting the TNC original while simultaneously improving upon its failures. This means that the surfing is now as fast-paced and intense as the skating and the course design is raised to a whole new level. Gone are the convoluted objectives and clunky mechanics replaced with a straightforward linear approach that really works in Thrilla's Safari's favor. The seven worlds that comprise Thrilla's journey offer an impressive amount of variety with the signature skating and surfing sections blending seamlessly with shark riding, water falling, and culminating with the traditional boss battles. The bosses loom large and boast life bars of a comparable stature and our hairy hero is armed with nothing more than an infinite supply of coconuts with which to disarm them. Once these menacing monsters are out of the equation, a narrative unfolding cutscene will unlock. These cutscenes are comprised of equal parts highly stylized artwork and cringy dialogue and I got a huge kick out of both. If there was ever an award for the most 90s writing in a video game, then Thrilla Safari would win it hands down, but I digress. The amusing cinematic transitions to the next leg of Thrilla's trip, and the challenge continues to escalate as we're confronted with a fresh batch of enemies and obstacles. We're given an advantage over these hurdles by the temporary invincibility items and the 1-up rewarding bonus games, but we're hindered by the default lack of lives and no continues, ensuring that we're almost certainly gonna rack up countless game overs before we reach the conclusion. Fortunately, Sculptured Software accounted for this by programming in a code that maxed out the supply of 1-ups and added an additional option to skip past aggravating sections with a press of the select button, and I was off to the races once I learned of this life-saving discovery! After briefly suffering a shame spiral over using a code, I quickly came to my senses upon reaching the World 7 finale. This literal lava hell is a Herculean gauntlet of epic proportions that will put even the most MLG pros to the test and my blood was boiling by the time I'd gotten through it. The subsequent boss battle was disappointingly mundane and the ending left off on a very awkward note. Lame and abrupt ending aside, Thriller Safari more than exceeded my expectations and I applaud Sculptured Software for fulfilling the potential promised by their predecessor. There are admittedly a few bumps in the road along the journey, with the repetitive level design and recycled bosses being the most egregious, but none of that ruins the overall fun factor and I absolutely recommend giving this a try. Anyway, now that we've soaked up some of that summer sun, I have another Cygnus Destroyer review to prepare for. Be sure to come back for that, but until then, this is Matt, aka the LJN Defender, signing out! Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, the boxes on the screen right now will lead to some more of my videos, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my avatar in the bottom right hand corner. Thanks again!